It is National 4-H Week, and I'm excited to welcome two local 4-H members, Alexandra Poling and Caitlin Jackson. They're joining us live from our remote studio. Alexandra, Caitlin, good morning. Good morning. Well, this is an exciting time for 4-H with it being National 4-H Week, and October is also the start of the new 4-H year. So I'm curious, what does 4-H Week mean to you? Well, to me, it means just really, it's, since it's at the start of the new year, it means, for me, it means just starting over and getting ready for the next year and figuring out my new projects and everything. Probably a pretty busy year yeah. for you, too. And Alexander, how about you? I think of it as somewhat celebratory because we have completed the past year and we've done the record books and all the other things that may not be the best parts, but they're still very much fun. But we get to celebrate what we've done in the past year and ready to start a new one. Well, talk about how 4-H has helped you um, and what skills have you gained from being a part of the organization? Well, um, I've gained a lot of leadership skills. When I first started in 4-H, I wasn't good at public speaking. And now I've really gained a lot of skills in public speaking and I'm becoming a pretty good leader, I think. So it's really helped with that. Absolutely. And Alexander, what about you? Yeah, I would say the same thing. I learned a lot of different leadership skills and definitely public speaking as I was really shy. And I can still be a little shy, but 4-H has really helped me work through those things. It also is helpful for being able to complete projects because we learn a whole bunch of different techniques to do things and it helps us complete full projects. Well, and talk about some of the project areas because I know that there, there really is a little bit of something for everyone. If you have an interest, there's probably a project area for that. So tell us about that. Yes, there's so many different projects. You can have something as simple as the reading project and then you have things like animal projects, foods, sewing, there's um, home environment where you just get to like redo something or you can make things in arts and crafts. It's just there's tons of projects. There's construction zone where you can just build with Legos or other toys. Mm -hmm. You And like we said, there are animals if you have the space for that. Um, animals can range from like a huge cow to even a cat maybe or a chicken. Mm -hmm. Well, I think a lot of people do think of the animals when they think of 4-H, but there's just a lot out there. Now, one of the things people may also think is that 4-H is really for rural students, but that's not the case. Who is 4-H for? 4-H is for everyone. Um, I know kids that live in the city that come to our club. Um, I live pretty far out in the country, and I go to it. Um, it's just for anyone that wants to join. Uh, if you want to join, it's fun, and you can live anywhere. Yeah, you can do anything because w even in like photog the photography project, all you really need is a phone and the ability to print out the photo. So it doesn't matter where you are because well, you don't have to have animals. How can people get involved if they're interested? Well, you can contact the Extension Office, the K-State 4-H Extension Office, or I think that's the main way to do it. Find a club in your area. There are clubs yeah. all over, especially in Topeka. There are a ton of different mm -hmm. clubs that you can join wherever you live. All right, ladies. Well, thank you for being with us today, and I wish you the best with the start of your new 4-H year.